Welcome back to Deep House with Larry White at the historic home of Sam and Alfreda Maloof in El Paloma, California. Lauren Verdugo, my apprentice, is here with me today as we continue to explore the wonderful artifacts found in the Maloof collection. In today's fifth episode, we're going to see some of Frida's beautiful artwork along with more chair designs from the early 1960s. Lauren, this is one of my favorite little spots in the house because it has Sam and Alfreda's work together. Their creative energy is what brought them together and they, their relationship lasted 60 years. So this is an example right here of her work. Um, and she was working uh, with the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs in Santa Fe, New Mexico and right. working with um, those Native Americans and working alongside people like Maria Martinez and Lucy Lewis. Yeah, they became uh, good friends, and she became she was absorbed right into those families because she lived in the pueblos rather than live in town like some of the other instructors. But she um, she was very much involved with the culture, and and this is a great example of, of how she processed that experience. And it's a true example of where Sam and Alfreda's collection and their eye for a certain aesthetic right. Right. comes from. I mean, this is a huge influence yeah, on their collecting. That's right. Um, they were both very talented, and, and uh, Frida was absolutely amazing. This is a little chip carving sampler from 1939. When you look at the delicate, intricate work that she's put into this, it's truly amazing. So Larry, you said it's 1939, so that is an entire decade before she even met Sam. Right, that's before she met Sam. Right, and so she even used those techniques on that stool down right. there. Right, uh, this is a little stool she made before she knew Sam. Uh, we don't have a date on it, but we can guess it was during that time in the late 30s or early 40s, probably. Wow. Um, she also uh, was involved with other media, including ceramics. Uh, she told me that she uh, learned to throw on the wheel and that kind of thing. And here's a great example of a tile piece that she made uh, while she was in the school scripts. This was 1948, right when she met Sam. Wow, yeah. Right about the same time. So tell me about uh, furniture in this room. This chair right here, the, the docents call it the Mad Hatter chair. Yeah, it's a great, great moniker. Uh, this is an example of Sam's experimentation that lasted all through the 50s. Right. Trying to develop his own aesthetic language and pushing design as far as he could. And uh, this is one of the niche aesthetic pieces uh, that uh, is very extreme. The tilt of it, the way the arms are, the spread of the back. Look how deep this is compared to some of the other ones we've looked at. Definitely. This is an extremely comfortable chair, but you have to have a certain kind of aesthetic to appreciate it. Right. You know, and so uh, it's just a great example. 1960, 5960, right in that range. So on this piece, obviously we're still in the 60s and we're still continuing on with that upholstery. So yeah. of course we got Jack Leonard Larson upholstery, right. super texture, super color, it's all just something that Sam needed in his chairs. Right, it really uh, accentuated the structure of his walnut frames. Sam was a good friend with Jack. Jack was out of New York, a textile designer, and these fabrics were produced in Mexico with brilliant, vibrant color, and uh, Sam was just taken by it. And he worked with the full spectrum, not just the bright stuff. This is a great example of a more ochre tone, which Absolutely. is unusual for that period. Right. But it fits beautifully with that chair. Um, so we move from 1960 to 1964. You can see how the design has modified to a more acceptable kind of um, aesthetic that would reach a broader spectrum of people. And I, I think he continued to do that through the rest of his career, which is why he was so successful, I think. Um, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, going from here, uh, Sam starts to mess around with rocker designs. So I guess that's the next step in what we get to look yeah. at. Yeah, the next, next grouping we're going to see is the very first rocker, 1963. And we're going to see some advances in uh, aesthetics as he went along. I think it'll be really interesting All right. in the next segment. Let's do it. Yeah. 